So welcome back to the sawmill friends. Today's video was sponsored by our friends at Factor and more about that here in just a few minutes. But right now we're heading up to the mill and I think we're gonna finish up some of that nice walnut today that we started in the last video. You guys hang in there. working on that walnut I'm gonna be using Mr. Cotto today and while doing my daily inspections on this machine I noticed the hydraulic oil was a little low I think I lost some when I was putting a grapple on the other day and the coupler got hung up on the uh, grapple end needs just a little bit for those of you that might be curious there's a sight glass right there for the hydraulic level and I don't know if I can get the camera in there or not. I probably can't. But anyways, there's a little glass right there. And if the oil is halfway up, it's in good shape. And it's just a little low right there. Not too much, but enough that I need to add some to it. Raise up this top so we can access everything a little bit easier. Grab a wrench to get that cap off. Wrong drawer. There we go. Inch and an eighth. That's the biggest one I've got. I'm sure I'm glad it's not bigger than that. Now for those of you that have machinery and tractors and all that good stuff to maintain and you hate lugging around five gallon buckets of hydraulic fluid, let me show you guys something I bought on Amazon the other day. Keyword is bought. They didn't sponsor this or nothing like that. It's this little uh, caddy that the five gallon bucket rides on. And check it out, you don't have to pick these heavy things up and carry them around your shop, and they're cheap. I got that on Amazon, somewhere in the video description, I'll put a link to that in case you guys wanna check them out. But they're out there, friends. I should've got one of these little caddies years ago. I used to lug these things around the shop all the time, and it was really a pain. Really nice addition, and it's cheap. And something else I got on this little uh, contraption here, is this pump that goes on the top. Got this on Amazon also, not sponsored, nothing like that. Bought this with my own money, but maybe it will help somebody else out there that's tired of lifting up these five gallon buckets and trying to empty them into your oil reservoir. It gets old really fast. So this is just a pump that goes on the top, nothing fancy. And this is a lid that goes over your existing bucket. It's got little wean nuts here on the side. But this right here also makes it easier because you're not sitting here trying to hold a five gallon bucket up in the air and put it in a funnel. You just got this little thing right here you put in your reservoir and pump your handle. And that's all there is to it. These two simple things right here, friends, have made my life easier when it comes to tractor maintenance, truck maintenance, and also maintenance for the excavator when we start doing the 50 hour service on that here in a few weeks. Worth the money right there. I wish, I'd, I wish somebody would have showed me this stuff a long time ago. Maybe somebody else out there has the same aggravation and it might help you out in your shop. All right, that should be enough. All right, friends, you guys hang in there. And real briefly, let me talk about today's sponsor for this video, Factor, and then we'll get into sawing up this nice walnut. So Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Our team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. Now here at my business, time is precious. If I don't have to spend time in the kitchen, cooking a meal and I can throw it in the oven for seven minutes and eat and be back to work within 30 minutes. Now that's a win for me and with Factor, you can do that because you don't have to cook anything. Tear the plastic off, put it in the oven, and in seven minutes you can be eating. So in less than 30 minutes, you're back to work. That's very important to me here at the farm. I can't reiterate enough time management when you're running a business from home because it does get away from you and stuff like this gives you more time to get your work done, which means more time in the afternoon to spend with your family because you're not stuck working all day. And Factor really increases my family time by decreasing the time I spend in the kitchen trying to make meals. 
This is a sponsored video, but I have never heard of Factor before they reached out to me, and that's no lie. I have never heard of that company, and after we use their meals for the past week, my wife is ordering more, and that's not trying to get you guys to go along with what I'm doing. That's just the truth of it. We really enjoyed the meals, and we eat lunch together every day in the house, and in seven minutes, guys, it's on the table, and it's a full-course meal. It's delicious. We had all the six meals that they sent to us and not one of them I did not like. So head on over to factor75.com or click the link below and use code OUTTHEWOODS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next box. That's code OUTTHEWOODS50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. So once again, friends, I want to thank Factor for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. All right, friends, on the sawmill, this is black walnut. It's about five feet long. It's got a really nice crotch out here toward the end. And I think I'm going to go ahead and flip this one over and start from the underside. So we won't probably see any nice crotch figure in our slabs until we get to the bottom, which is on the top right now. And for those of you that didn't see the last video, here's a recap on how we got to this point on this log. Man, that looks good right there. Let's throw some water on it and make it pop. As you guys just saw, we got two really nice crotch slabs out of this log so far. I think we'll get maybe two more today. At least one, but maybe two. Let's flip this one over and see how we can do. You guys hang in there. All right, guys, I failed to mention on the sawmill today, you guessed it, Joe Means Silver Tip Turbo 7. I say that in every video, friends, because somebody always asked. If you want to get those blades, call Joe Main. Cell phone number is in the video description. All right, friends, we finished up that log, and based on my calculations for the board footage, right around 124 board feet. And I'll show you guys here in just a minute how I do board footage on a crotch log because it's kind of hard to measure because you got a small end and then it always gets wider up there at the crotch. So I cut two slabs on this yesterday and today we got five more for a total of seven. That's pretty good. The pith was doing some crazy stuff down here. You can see the pith right there and I captured it in the middle of a slab. That's what you want to do right there. But there's a void that I talked about in the previous video, and I'm not sure how that's going to look on those slabs once we start pulling these off. The top two should be okay. Those two right there may have some issues, and we should have some decent crotch figure on the bottom one. Let's take a closer look. 
And guys, I'm also using a new microphone today. I was having a terrible time with the audio on my other wireless microphone, so I bought a new set, and hopefully it's a lot better today. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the audio today, because before, I was having to redo tapes up here because the audio was terrible. It was a real pain. And it was also a real pain to buy new microphones. These ones right here were about $500. Making YouTube videos sure is expensive. All right, so this is the top slab, probably the lowest grade out of all of them because of the sapwood. No sense in throwing water on this one. All right, take off another one here. Then the next one will have that void in it. We'll take a look at that. When you factor in the drying time and all the sawing on these live edge slabs, they're not a lot of fun to saw. But, as my good buddy Robert Milton says down at Hobby Hardwoods, Alabama, I like to sell these slabs. I don't like sawing them, but I like to sell them because they always bring really good money. Well, not too bad at all right there, guys. That void only goes in about nine inches. That's good news, especially for my customer. These don't belong to me. Two on the bottom should have some crotch figure on this far side. None on that face, let me flip it over. Okay, we got a little bit on this side. It's not a whole lot, but there is a little bit of crotch figure right there. More than enough to throw some water on. Let me go get my bucket. All right, guys, right here's my formula for measuring board footage on a live edge slab. And this is usually done at the end product phase, meaning this slab has been kiln dried and ready to be sold to a woodworker. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's really wide right there. It's 25 inches right here in the middle. We're at 20 and right here on the far end or the operator's side, it's about 19. So what I like to do is, I like to take three measurements and it doesn't matter if this is a four footer or an eight footer, it's usually the same thing. I'll measure right in the middle, which is right at 20. I'll come up here at the widest point then I'll come down at the narrowest point and I'll take those three numbers, divide them by three, and there's your average width. I think that's the fairest way to measure these out. Alright guys, before we go, let me answer a few questions here. I've been seeing the comments here lately. I was going to saw some more today, but Bruno has some plans for me tonight. So, i got to get down to the house and get cleaned up because I don't want to be late. He'll have my hide. So one question I get is what does the blade look like on the debarker? Well, it's not really a blade. It's more of a blunt edge right there. It's not even sharp. And somebody also asked, when do you sharpen these? Well, I've had uh, four wood misers and two of them had debarkers on them and I've never had to sharpen this. I'm not sure how long this will last, but probably a long time, but it's, you know, it's dull to the touch, but it moves just fast enough to get rid of the bark, which does prolong your blade life. Another question I see in the comments are what are those fingers doing that fall on top of the wood? My good buddy Brian Harrington down in Texas calls these wind chimes for good reason. They kind of sound like it when they start moving on the sawmill. But all this is doing is trapping the lumber between these fingers so if the lumber is right here in the middle, it can't go sideways when it comes back. It keeps the lumber straight and that's very important, especially when you're doing production sawing. You don't want your lumber coming back off the sawmill and going sideways on the floor or hitting the cable tray right here. That right there would be a bad day. 
Another question we see down the comments is, do you sharpen your own blades? And yes, we do. Right there's my sharpener and this is my setter. Both of these are made by Woodmiser. You can probably get both of them for around maybe $5,500, maybe $6,000. It's not a lot of money if you're doing a lot of sawing because if you're shipping your blades off to be sharpened, this right here will save you a ton of money in shipping over the years. They'll pay for themselves pretty fast. And right there behind those two machines is my collection of Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7s. I've got two boxes on the top and all those blades right there on those shelves. And those are all brand new. I don't have any resharps in here right now. And most of these questions are coming from people that are new to the channel and that's just fine. I don't mind it at all. What kind of dust collector are you using on your Super 70? That's a Harbor Freight two horsepower. It costs about $220. It's okay, it does keep up with the 70, but sooner than later, it will probably burn itself up. And when it does, I'll probably get a five horsepower model to keep up with the dust a little bit better. It keeps up with it, but it's just a little slow. This right here I thought was a good question. This is from a Patreon member. And he asked me, what tool do you have at your sawmill that you use all the time, but you rarely show on camera? That's an easy one, but you guys hardly ever see this. Right there it is, friends, an air compressor. I use this at the sawmill all day long. I rarely show it on camera because it's not too exciting, but it has a whole lot of different purposes here. Cleans me up at the end of the day. It also cleans off the blade guide rollers better than anything when you're getting the dust off at the end of the day. Also use this to dust off the engine and the bed rails and pretty much all the components of the sawmill off camera. Had another question about the sawmill. Somebody asked if I could control the lubrication tank. And yes, I can. I can turn it off and on and I can also set the rate of it. I can make it go real fast and have constant spurts or I can slow it down to where it just does a spurt every few seconds where the water shoots out. Now that water system is under pressure. So it's kind of like having a pressure washer shooting water out on the blade as you're sawing. It works really good. It's one of the best features on these wood misers is the water system. If you have the lube miser system more specifically, it's not gravity fed like a lot of sawmills where you just turn on the nozzle and the water flows. This one shoots out with pressure, which I think keeps your blade a lot cleaner. Right, friends, I think I'm done for the day and sorry for the short video. I try to make these videos at least 20 to 30 minutes. This one right here, I think will be a little bit shorter, but the next one I'll do 30 minutes on guys. So uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you back here tomorrow. We've got more walnut to saw up. Mm -hmm.